732, good morning to you watching and listening to Breakfast with Stephen and Anne. Yeah, just want to show off the award again. You're award loving award. that, aren't you? Oh, well, I am. I think we should be very proud of it. So you should have been there on I the think day. I should have proud of it. I was, honestly, I'm not up to it yet. Uh, Although I must confess, I thought it was in the evening. Ah, uh, yeah, it's an afternoon, John. I didn't realise it was an afternoon. Yeah, I don't know yeah. why it's an afternoon. And I got, kept getting lots of messages saying, oh, GB News is one, GB News is one. I said, it hasn't even happened yet, because I was imagining it was a 7.30 thing. No. Because awards do's are usually in the evening. I know, they? I know. Oh, but I was so that. proud to actually see everything. See, I mean, two major awards, GB News won, which is brilliant, but this one was for the whole breakfast team. And that's, that's all five of us who've been doing so much on the breakfast shows over the last um, one and a half years. And, and all the team, team back there as well. Uh, it's for oh. the whole week, Monday right through to Sunday. Yes. That's so it's good. ours. Yeah. It is ours. Uh, let's look at what's in the papers for you. Grounded hog day for Rishi, says the Metro. Uh, as judges said, Rwanda is not safe for channel migrants to be sent to. The Daily Mail lead as well on the Rwanda court ruling. We should decide who comes here, not criminal gangs, their front page says. Big news for the NHS this morning. Um, the Express has Rishi's radical plan to fix the NHS once and for all. And it's a blueprint to boost NHS workforce by some 200,000, the Times says. And does Sir Andy have one more ace up his sleeve? Ask the Telegraph as the double Wimbledon champion warms up ahead of his battle for the big title. Yeah. No is the answer to that one. we we'll just put you out of your misery. Oh, don't say that. There is always hope. There is always hope. No, his time's gone now. No. Hips gone, knees gone. Mm -hmm. We might to pasture, that's what I say. Oh, for heaven's sake! Well, I can't say that. I he's, our, he's our sporting hero. Well, no, no. Can and I have. Um, <laughs> let's talk to author Nikki Hodgson and co-founder of the Together Association, Alan Miller, who are here. Good to see you Hello. both. Hi. Let's start off with a mirror. Nikki, should we, yes. this, this winds me up like a, like a. I'm so glad you said that because it winds me up too. They've got a letter on the front that a seven-year-old has written to the prime. She didn't even say, "Dear Prime Minister, dear Rishi," she says. <laughs> yes, um, <laughs> which, which, which I, it's a bit you know, familiar. Well, it is a bit familiar. Um, and um, saying we want free school meals for all. The Mirror thinks this is good enough to publish on the front page. Well, the reason the Mirror thinks it's good Rot. enough to publish on the front page is because it's also the Mirror's campaign. campaign. So we've yeah. got to, we've got to say that it's really important. Yeah. It's, it's not exactly independent. It's probably um, the daughter of one of the Mirror's. Well, it, it's funny, it? isn't it? Because you do ask yourself those questions when you see these kinds of letters. I mean, in principle, I completely agree with this story actually because you know Marcus Rashford very rightly brought to our attention you know the issue of poverty food poverty and the issue of you know when children are not at school in the holidays they're not getting fed and this is to do with the fact that actually um, there are two million children in England eligible for uh, free school meals and only um, and 800,000 of them are not getting them so it's a huge, it is, you know, nearly a million kids, that's a lot. Well, that's an issue, but not free school meals for everybody. Well, yeah, that's what the, so that's, that's the, that's the issue here, so that's what the Mirror is, is asking for, that everybody should have free school meals. The thing is, where does the money come from? Because if we aren't even feeding the kids that are classed as on the poverty line, where do we get the money from for the rest of them? I mean, I, I absolutely agree that we should be feeding kids that are not being fed. I mean, they can't think, they can't learn, they can't behave properly, you know, it's, it is a no-brainer for want of a yeah. better expression but the issue you know the idea that you know a rich rich family uh, should also get free school meals I think there are lots of people I mean I would count myself as being able to afford meals for my girl when she's the, of the age to go to school I wouldn't want them that they don't need no. to be free for me I'm happy to pay for them do you know what I mean yeah especially I'm if it subsidizes for children that can't afford so you know Isn't I think there a time when we all had Free school meals. They're it, yeah. yeah there I was. seem to remember that, that. I mean, they were disgusting, but they were there. They were vile, yeah. yeah. And that's the other thing. If we don't pay for them, then we get, you know, the absolute worst kind of food, mm. arguably. But it is where's the money going to come from? And I think the other thing is, um, well, surely in 2023 in Britain, uh, a modern industrial society, <clears throat> we should be in a position where we should be having wealth creation for people. People should be paid really good wages. There shouldn't be this situation. And one of my concerns also about using children, we've seen it in a lot of campaigns that adults get behind mm. very young children rather than, it's fine, some of the people that have been campaigning for this go out, campaign, win hearts and minds. But surely the question is uh, that we should be getting 
more productivity, more wealth creation, uh, better wages for people. So we're not having to do this sort of thing. Yeah. I mean, 75 years on from the Butler Education Act and all of those questions, we really should be in a position now. And that's something that really I think uh, everyone should be focused on. I'll tell you what worries me and has worried me for a while, and I may well be wrong, so I'm open to, to your suggestion or criticism, whatever you want, but we seem to be parents seem to be abdicating responsibility for children to schools. I mean, this whole rush that there was a few years ago for breakfast clubs. Mm. So you now take your child along early and they get their breakfast and they're getting their lunch. And you, what, so you only have to feed your own child once a day. I mean, where, where is parental responsibility here? Am I being yeah. too harsh? Well, that a point? I, I don't, I mean, I, to, I completely agree with you, Stephen. You know, if you have a child, it's up to you to feed them. But the problem is, we still need to fix the problem of children that are not being fed, right? So yes. therefore we have to plug the gaps. when they're yes. So you can say oh, whether yeah. it's right or wrong, but the issue is they're going hungry and they're not able to concentrate. Oh, no, absolutely. So, you've got to, you've got to yes. plug the gaps. Yes, absolutely. of course. But, I mean, I suppose, I suppose one of the breakfast club... Um, reasons wasn't just because they couldn't it wasn't about not being able to afford to give breakfast it was also about people that were working really you know antisocial hours and maybe just didn't have time to make sure their kids had had breakfast i mean you could argue that if somebody goes to work at four or five five a.m you know and, and i'm talking about older kids maybe like 10 or even at secondary school well then how can you make sure that they've eaten that was, one of, the, that was think, one of the issues think about how we just like with the national health service and different types of provision we could have we should have that conversation in britain about education there's also sorts of different ways uh, they could be uh, a range we've seen it somewhat with the academy schools there can be a range of different ways of educating and I think increasingly as we've seen a politicized agenda in much of our education that it would actually do us well to have a big discussion in Britain about how we educate people and then what that means in terms of organizing but in the end it is about time scales with work and everything people work in different ways but people should be paid more money because if everyone got paid more money and companies could make more money and that's that's about productivity, reinvestment, uh, infrastructure, ambition, which is what political leaders should be focused on. Then we would not be in this situation where the government is saying that one in three are now actually yeah. receiving this, uh, rather than one in eight only 10, 12 years ago. So we've got to get this situation resolved. Mm. No, fair point. Um, let's talk, well, so what's not going to help with any of this is the interest rate, Alan. Look at the independent's take on this. Yes, so the independent today has led with the front page talking about how the banks have once again raised the rate from 6% now up to 6.37%. Those halcyon days that were yesteryear were just a few months ago that people, and some are still on it, of a 1% rate or just over. What this really means is now and over the next six months, and many have already had it, is that when people people are getting their two-year or five-year or extension mortgages redone, they are going to skyrocket. And it's enormously painful for people already and for those that are forthcoming. And some are trying to lock in the rate now where they still expect them to keep going up. All of this we should remember. We were told that we would have a safe pair of hands with both Rishi Sunak and Jeremy Hunt. We've seen Andrew Bailey, many, they were lambasting Liz Truss as it happens back then, the Bank of England and others. Oh, look how irresponsible she is and everything. And and they've been unable to get this under control. There has been uh, no real attempt, it seems, to deal with this situation. And what it means is that a lot of people in Britain who've not only got their own house, if they have managed to do that, but some of them have got a second house because that's the only investment many people can see for the future, for care, for other things, is that that's really painful. It also means rental rates are increasing because landlords are increasing rental rates. So everyone is suffering as the inflation goes up and rates go up. Uh, and we have to address the housing issue, which is the big elephant in the room, which is we need millions more houses in Britain. We need it for young people. We need it for development and investment, for wages, for growth. Uh, and all of this is a spiral of many problems, including the lockdowns, which had a terrible uh, impact on our economy. And again, needs to be addressed. And these um, points that uh, our Prime Minister put forward at the start of his tenure now look increasingly uh, absent. And to be fair, none of the other political parties seem to be putting forward something robust well, to deal with it. I'll tell you what worries me is when you talk about people locking in now because mm. there's a very good chance those rates are going to fall next year and they're going to be locked in for two, three or five years on a higher rate that they're going to struggle with. Why aren't banks bringing in capped rates? Because they were around at one stage. Well, so so you, you cap it at whatever level but if it falls below that your payments fall as well. So in America they have 30 year fixed rates. Michael Gove was suggesting I think quite sensibly actually 
potentially that you could get 25-year rates. You say that they quite probably will go down, Stephen. Well, let's hope they will. But if those of us who can remember the 80s, the 1980s, they were up at 12, 13 percent. Um, I know people that the other thing that we should remember is that well, there's we, no indication that it's going to go anything like that at the minute. Well, we've got a situation where banks have been failing in America. They've been underpinned. Uh, if we've also seen in the FT today, the front page, that people are taking money out of their own banks to pay things. If people all start claiming their money from banks uh, and we have the lack of ability to deal with these things and we've got this spiral of cost of living uh, I'm not sure it's as clear that they will decrease and I, I'm also concerned that the underwriting of that both in the Fed in the US and in the UK is not actually there we've had the over financialization of the markets and a lack of productivity manufacturing investment for the last 15 to 20 years and this really goes to the heart of what we have to address in the economy we you know people talk about adults in the room we need an ambitious robust plan that the public is at the heart of, that we all get behind in Britain. Manufacturing, employment, better wages, growth, training, uh, and also allowing these zombie banks and companies to fail. We've got to be we've got to be stern at the helm, and I just can't see it happening at the moment. People are going through a lot of pain. No, um, yeah, pain, because, I mean, just in the last couple of days, the banks have been doing anything to avoid giving preferential rate, rates, uh, while, while meanwhile making plans to put them up. Um, yesterday, it was reported that several banks were just, they were making people hang on the phone before they, and they were hanging on to the very last minute, not wanting to agree to a, a five and a half or whatever, six uh, and a half rate, because they were knew they were planning to put up the rate mm. tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, the banks have, just, so banks have the power yeah. to actually help people right now. And, you know, there's, and they're there's, avoiding and it. And they are actively avoiding it. I mean, I think the other thing that's going to be so concerning is the repossessions, which are bound to come, especially if, you know, and even if people are fixing rates in, you know, so it's, going to, it's just going to be so upsetting to see what's going to happen over the next year. Well, basically, the banks still can do what the heck they like. Yeah, they can. They're still not answerable to anyone. Mm. Um, let's talk about um, sweeteners in our drinks. Yes. Um, and this this cancer warning. Well, this is this is a story that's been around for a while. Actually, it's not a new story, but oh, years. Yeah, we've, yeah years. years. We've talked yeah. about um, as, uh, aspartame as a potentially potentially cancerous ingredient in things like, like Diet Coke. This is what this particular story is to do with. But actually, it's in lots of the papers this morning, but the reason I've picked it out of the Independent is because they say that the, the sort of crucial point is that it's all to do with how much you ingest. So basically what they're arguing is that um, the reason they're saying possible link is because you'd have to consume vast, vast quantities for it to, be, to have a proven link. And that's just, that's just not there right now. And by comparison, I think this is quite interesting, um, the journalist in this article says things that are in the same category um, as aspartame is going to be are things like aloe vera, working as a carpenter or a joiner, working in the dry cleaners and pickled vegetables. They've all, they all carry the same possible Level link. Of, yeah. So they're just trying to put it into context. So do we need Don't to know? totally freak out right do now, basically. Do we need basically. to know about this, then? Well, yeah, I do think it's partly what this... And it's the World Health Organization. Here we have it, right? There's a bit of alarmism. There are concerns about some of these lim links to, to, to cancer. But it does seem to me that the World Health Organization is going on a whole PR campaign at the moment when it's trying at the same time to be implementing uh, new amendments to pandemic strategies. We've seen that, you know, what they're suggesting along with the uh, what they call the uh, IHR uh, rules well, could mean that they could end up forcing sovereign nations to shut down and lock down all over again. Well, let's not conflate the issues. <laughs> well, I think the thing is the issue. Let's focus on this one. Well, yes, but the WHO, what's interesting about it is that why has it come out now on this issue? It seems like on a lot of things it's coming out consistently as I a bit know, of a I'm PR. I don't know, I'm sceptical. I just think, you think of the big money behind diet foods. Yes. Uh, but, or diet foods and diet drinks that include aspartame. You think of the huge money behind it. Yeah. It's in their interests to quash this. Yes. Isn't it? And that's to tell also, us, that's also tell really, us this yeah. is just a scare story. And I just think, you know, they did that with tobacco. They've done that with other yeah. things. I'm sceptical. It's the first thing that's made me think maybe I do drink too much diet. You only have yes. a couple of cans a day. I probably have well, a couple of cans a day. Well, sugar is the, also the other but thing. I know people who have far more than that yeah. a day. Yeah. 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 Um, let's, let's move on because this one I really want to touch on because um, I saw. This is in the mail, Alan, uh, and I saw Nigel talking about it on his show last night. It is and, it, and it beggars, it beggars belief. So basically, and it's been going on for a while now. So he basically can't have a bank account. It is quite astonishing that. Um, 
what we see is two months ago, uh, Nigel Farage, broadcaster and the winner of the Trick Award, actually, uh, uh, has was told that his bank was being closed down. He wasn't given any explanation. He wrote to the chairman. He only got a very uh, sort of boiler plate response. Uh, other people have had this, these things happen as well. Perhaps no one quite as high profile as him. He's then subsequently had six other banks that this has happened with and he now faces a situation he may have to leave the United Kingdom. The question is, he's put forward three different options. One is that there was an EU ruling that you have uh, you know, uh, uh, a particular type of person that might be susceptible to persuasion because they're political. Very sort of Orwellian term. Another is that uh, perhaps somehow they've got uh, dubious money. None of the, this is all speculative and none of the, absolutely unproven, nothing there of any evidence. But what the real concern is here is that, um, and people that have set up independent political parties have come under the same issue, that banks are not opening or closing down accounts of either new independent parties or people that they don't like the ideas of. A bit like what we saw happen with some of the platforms taking down the Free Speech Union, Us For Them, the campaigners, almost as though that the, the, the concern is that they're targeting those with ideas that are not appropriate to some quarters. And I think this is very, very concerning. We should find out exactly what's going on. The banks should it's actually explain. Wellian, isn't it's it? sinister, isn't well, it? Well, yeah, I mean, look, banks have obviously long done this with lots of different things. When I lived in a report from America, I actually covered <laughs> I, this would be more controversial, but I covered the stories about um, sex workers and porn stars, for example, which had their bank accounts routinely closed with no explanation and it was just because the banks didn't like their money okay, and it yeah. wasn't illegal what they were doing so that you know there's a precedent for doing that it just seems to shift from different kinds of people but i agree that unless there's going to be a full investigation into any concerns about where the money is coming from etc then i don't understand how they can get away with it no, nigel no. was making the point last night that if you are prevented and he's tried to move his money to other banks and he's yeah. had the same problem if you're prevented from having a bank account in this country you can't really live you, can't, you, you can't, can't. can't because you need it for everything you, you do well this is the concern that people have got people do worry about things like central bank digital currency and digital ID but this is in an analogue situation if you just get your but we see it in some of those spy films don't we or whatever when they just have their accounts closed you don't have any freedom then and I think we should find out what's going on they should be on the record to explain yeah I think we need some answers on that one um, Alan Nikki thank you both very much